In this video, we're going to talk about API monetization using Zuplo. Now, if you have used Zuplo in the past on the channel, where we introduced an API gateway or a layer in between our front-end and back-end code, and specifically, we've built this project where we had this AI blogger. You provide a prompt and it gives you a blog post back and it generates images. At the end of that video, if you haven't watched, we also introduced this API layer using Zuplo that allows us now to expose this logic, this API to other developers. This is right now for end consumers or customers to come in, sign in, and then use it. But you might want to also provide this functionality through an API. So somebody can have a different interface, a different front-end application, and just use the logic of what you have created. Now, in this instance, if you're only talking to open AI models, such as a GPT-4 and Dolly to create images, but you can have any other business logic that you want and expose that through an API. We were using API authentication and rate limiting. And now on top of it, we, we're going to introduce subscription or payment to monetize the API using Stripe. So let's jump into our Zuplo dashboard and build on top of the gateway we created in the previous video. This video is sponsored by Zuplo, so thank you very much for sponsoring this video. Now, from the homepage, you can see there's this link to monetize your API. We're going to follow this guide step by step. Kudos to the team for putting this guides and documentation into place. We have had an introduction to Zuplo and API gateways before. By again, referencing the documentation in previous videos, I'm going to include the link in the description or somewhere in the cart for that deep dive into Zuplo and also the AI blogger if you're interested to watch those videos. But in this video, as I mentioned, we're just going to build uh, monetization on top of the API gateway that we had in the previous video. So we're going to use a Stripe. We're going to define some products inside of the Stripe. And then we're going to sync this with plans or different limitations inside our Zuplo. We're going to define a webhook so Stripe can talk or communicate to our Zuplo. And then we're going to apply some policies in our gateway, inside the API gateway or our routes in Zuplo. So therefore it limits based on whatever it is that we define for the different customers. So you can read more about this new feature that is still in beta. So use it with a grain of salt or um, with that in mind. But let's just jump into the first step, which is setting up our developer portal. Now, before continuing here, I just want to mention something as a reminder or an overview if you haven't watched the previous videos. Once you create a project or an API gateway uh, inside of Zuplo, you will be provided with a gateway URL. This is going to be your dedicated URL so other developers can talk to this endpoint. But you would also get this developer portal URL this is going to be based on your specifications and the routes that you have. For example, here for creating a blog using AI, we have an endpoint or we created an endpoint. It's a post endpoint. It tells you what headers it is required. So let me make this a bit bigger. So we need authorization, authorization headers. And in the body, we need a prompt and a user ID. And then it provides an example of the body or the post that you need to request that you need to send, and then the example of a response. Again, if you haven't watched the previous video, I talk about how you would define this, but this is automatically generated once you create an API layer. Now, another good thing here is that you can just test this endpoint right from here too. So I don't have any authentication set yet. So if I go ahead and test this, it's going to 401 and error out by saying that authorization failed because as you see in the documentation, we do need an authorization header. We're going to go through the steps of signing in with a user and then subscribing to a plan and then using that API key that's generated for us after the subscription and then make this test again and then see the rate limiting and the coda behind this scene. Now, step number one is to set up our developer portal. This is setting up some products inside Stripe, as I mentioned, and then sync that or create a corresponding plan in Zuplo for it and then define a webhook so that these two can talk to each other. So let's go to Stripe. If you don't have an account, you can just create an account here. Once you did, uh, we can just jump into products and create a product together. So let's say we have a free product. So we're going to say free. Description is maybe 10 requests. I'm going to make this simple. So it's going to be recurring on a monthly basis. 
and uh, zero Canadian dollars because I'm in Canada. Why not? So zero monthly and add this product. Okay, great. Let's create a second tier. Let's call this basic. And we're going to have 100 requests. Again, recurring monthly and then price, maybe $10. And then let's add the product. Now we can have another tier over here. So we're going to name this Pro. Maybe this gets 200 requests. This uh, descriptions here doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just for the user to see these different descriptions inside the pricing table that we're going to create in a second. But we're going to implement this specifics of the rate limits and um, the quotas inside of our Zuplo plans as well. So again, here, 200 requests, maybe $20 a month. Let's add the product over here too. And then now that we have these three different products, we can just go to the pricing tables. Here, we're going to create a pricing table. Now, this is going to allow you to select different products. So actually, let's select the free version first. Then we're going to add another product. This is going to be the basic one. And then another product is going to be the pro version. So as you can see on the right hand side, it's a bit small, um, but this creates a pricing table from our three different tiers. Everything else, I'm just going to keep the same uh, and then leave it at the default settings. You can decide what happens after each one of them are selected or allow promotional codes here or adjust, allow the customers to input their address and whatnot. But we're going to just go ahead with uh, this and finish the setup. So this is going to give us an HTML or a web component to load a script and then show the pricing table so you can copy this code inside of your application. But here, we're not going to do that. We're going to hook this up with our Zuplo. So this pricing table automatically shows up inside of our developer portal. So we created the products. Okay, so let's just scroll down. We created the pricing table. Now we need to set up the Zuplo portal. So let's go inside of our Zuplo. Now we need to set up some secret keys. This is a token that allows us to talk to our Stripe. We are going to set it as an environment variable. Uh, as you can see here, we've also talked about it before, but I'm going to walk you through it. And once we have that, we can go to the monetization setting on the developer portal and actually uh, paste in the pricing table that we have. So let's just start from there. So inside of our project in Zuplo, we can just come down to this dev portal.json. And if we scroll down here, we can enable this monetization. For now, we only have the Stripe as the payment provider. But what requires here is our pricing table, our publishable key from Stripe and the secret key. So let's just start from the pricing table ID. If you go back to Stripe where we just created this pricing table, we can get the pricing table ID right here. So I'm going to copy this, bring it back to our Zuplo and copy this here. The publishable key is from Stripe. So if we go to our table here, if we can see there is a publishable key here, you can set this as an environment variable, but this is not a secret value. You can, if you want to set it also as an environment variable, I'm just going to paste it here. But for the secret key, you do need to put this uh, through an environment variable. We're going to see that in a second. But to get it, if uh, I just make this a bit smaller, if I go to homepage or up top there, developers, you can see the API keys. The publishable key is the same key that we just used. This is on the account level. But you do also have the secret key. You can just copy the secret key and bring it over to Zuplo where we need to set some environment variables. So how do we set this? Well, here it tells you that you can go to your settings and environment variables and add a Stripe secret key variable. So let's go up, go to our settings and inside of our environment variables, I already have the open AI API key and Superbase secret keys and URL. This is again, the project that we had on AI block generator. So it talks to open AI and then uh, stores the blog post and the image inside the Superbase. So we're going to create another variable. We're going to call this Stripe and then underscore secret key. We're going to paste in our key. This needs to be set as a secret. So you should not expose this value to any anyone. And that's why we are using an environment variable. And with this, I'm going to hit save. 
Now, once I save this and now I have this Stripe secret key set here, now inside of our developer portal, so if I go back inside of my code and developer JSON, where we enabled monetization, we have the pricing table, the publishable key, and now we need to create or pass in or access our environment variable. And this is how you would access the environment variable through a function. So $env and then Stripe secret key. This is the same thing that we named our environment variable. And that's, I guess, all you need here. We'll just make this a small. So now I have this enabled. Maybe I need to save this to for this to take effect. Now with this, if I go on the developer portal, you can also access it from here. So it gives you the URL to your gateway or the developer portal. So let's click on this. We also close that. So now all I should be able to see is if I make this smaller, is that now up top, if you could see, I have this pricing table that wasn't present before, it's now added. And now this is reading the same plans or the same pricing table we just created in Stripe down here inside of my developer portal. So I have three different tiers that I can subscribe to. But before we, are, we could subscribe, actually, we need to set up Zuplo to have the same plans inside of Zuplo to be syncing with this Stripe and also set up a webhook for any time a subscription is created in Stripe. So we are aware of it inside of our Zuplo. So let's continue down here. We now check to see that we have the pricing table inside of our developer portal. So let's go to the next step. This is configuring different plans inside of our Zuplo. So we're going to go to the services and configure our bucket. This is how we're going to limit our quota or uh, the requests depending on different plans that we have here and we're going to create different plans that map um, to the same things that we created or to the products we created on Stripe. So let's go to our developer portal. I'm going to scroll up and go to services. I'm going to click on create services. This is going to be using the metering service for monetization. So let's configure this. We right now don't have any plans, so let's create some plans. We're going to create a free plan. External ID is going to be your product ID, so I'm going to go back to my product catalog inside of our free. The product ID is that, so you copy that, you bring it back here, you paste this external ID, and then for the meter, so let's say we want to um, meter the requests, and how many did we say we're going to allow here? 10 requests. So. We're going to set this to 10 requests and then we're going to create this plan. Now we want to create another plan for the basic external ID. Let's go back to Stripe, go back to products, go back to basic and copy that ID, bring it down here. We again want to limit the requests and then this is going to be 100. Now this key that's created here out of the label that you have actually matters. This is what we're going to then set inside of a policy we add to our API endpoint. So it's going to meter this specific one based on the three different buckets or three different plans that we're creating inside of our metering bucket. So it, it's important that you create the same name for all three different uh, plans. So let's create this plan as well. And lastly, we're going to create the pro plan. This is going to have a different external ID. So let's go to pro. Let's go to this product, come back here, paste it, and then again, requests are going to be 200 this time. So create this plan too. So we have the three different plans, free 10, 100, and 200. Now the next step is to use the Stripe monetization plugin. It is a Zuplo plugin that allows our project or gateway to listen for Stripe webhook subscription events. So anytime someone subscribes to a new plan on the Stripe side, we're going to send a webhook or receive this webhook from Stripe to also uh, create an API key inside of our Zuplo and assign them to a specific plan inside of our metering service so we can track their usage or API usage inside of our application. So to do this, we're going to go to code and create a new runtime uh, or a new module. And we're going to copy this code, which is basically um, using this Stripe monetization plugin to allow our gateway to listen for webhook. So let's do that. We're going to go inside the code. And here, we're going to go to modules. I'm going to hit the plus sign. 
and select the runtime extension. This is going to create a new module for us where we can copy this code. So let's go inside here. I'm going to select all and paste what we have here. Now inside, we are using Stripe secret key. This is the same environment variable that we have set already, but we do need another uh, webhook signing secret that we're going to get out of Stripe in a second. So we need another, or we need to set another environment variable. And that's the next step to set up our Stripe webhook. So going to the developer portal for, or the developers tab inside our Stripe account, we can go to the webhooks section and here we can create an endpoint. Now, what is going to be an endpoint? Well, the endpoint URL is your gateway URL. So going back here, if we go to our gateway deployed, we can copy our URL. So this is going to be the base. And then inside the doc, it actually tells you you need to extend it by forward slash plugins, Stripe, and Webhook. So let me just copy this and then paste this whole thing here. So it's going to our endpoint and then forward slash underscore underscore plugins, Stripe, and Webhooks. Okay. So let's select the events we want to listen to. We can search for subscription created. That's one. Subscription deleted and subscription updated. These are the only events that Zooplo right now works with. Maybe in future they add more. But for now, once a subscription is created or if it is canceled or if it is updated between different three tiers, we're going to communicate this to our Zooplo account. So create it, delete it, and update it. These are the three that are supported right now. And then we're going to click adding endpoint. This is going to... Now, anytime a subscription is created, Stripe is going to hit this endpoint that we created. Now, the signing secret is here. You can reveal this and copy. This is, again, a secret that you only have and set inside your Zooplo environment variable to make sure that this webhook is coming from Stripe rather than somebody else trying to hit your endpoint. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to create yet another environment variable. So let's go back to our settings inside of our environment variable. We're going to add a variable. It's again secret. Let me copy the value and then the name needs to be Stripe webhook signing secret. So let's also copy this to avoid any typos and I'm going to save this. Now with this, uh, the module we just created is going to work because this has access to the signing secret of our webhook and also the Stripe secret key. Okay, great. So now next step is purchase a subscription and we can provide a test payment method and actually see all this in action. Then we're going to also uh, test this. So let's go ahead to our developer portal. Let's refresh this page just to make sure we haven't signed in yet. So let me just go ahead and subscribe to the free plan here. This is going to ask me to sign in. I'm going to sign in using an account here. This is going to redirect me to Stripe checkout where I can provide my payment information. Even though this was without, it was zero dollars, you still need to go through this uh, setup. I'm going to provide a fake card ID here and then provide some address. Once we process or once this goes through, it should redirect us back to the portal. Uh, where we can see our API key and the subscription that we just created. So let's see this in action. So we have the plan here. The usage is 10, as you can see. It's a bit small, so let me make this a bit bigger. So we have our Koro, and it gives me an API key as well. Now, again, this is inside of our developer portal where we expose the different endpoints that we have. We provide documentation. We have the, we have the pricing table. And now, because I'm subscribed, um, not only I have the API endpoint and the different endpoints available to me, but I also see this API key down here, which I can copy and use inside of any application that I want to now talk to this API. But also down here where we see the examples, again, I'm going to make this a tad bigger. Uh, we have this test button, which when you click is going to have your authentication already set as the header here. So you don't have to. It's just an easy client that allows you to test. Now with this, if I go ahead and test with a prompt that's already there, it's going to take a little while because it's talking to OpenAI models, GPT-4 and Dolly to create images. Uh, this has nothing to do with Zooplo. It's 
uh, the amount of time required to generate our blog post. But I should it should go through. I didn't get any 400 or unauthorized um, response this time. And once this goes through and the text and the blog is generated, I should get the response back. Here we go. So the blog post is generated with the content, with the title that we provided, which we just used the prompt or the examples provided by the documentation here. And then the image is also created, which is going to be stored inside of our super page storage. And then we have gotten the URL back. Now, now if I go to subscriptions and close this off under the usage, you see this still says zero out of 10. So it did not account for this test that we just run. And the reason why is we haven't added this policy or this metering on top of our endpoint inside of Zooplo yet. And that's where the next step comes in. So third step and the last one is actually adding this monetization policy in front or on top of our routes. So we're going to first add an API key authentication. We have done this in the previous steps. So I'm going to explain what this is. And once we have the API key authentication, this is requiring anyone that talks to our API to have an, an API key, basically. And then we're going to add the monetization policy on top of it, which is going to then apply this specific plan that the user is subscribed to, to measure or meter or measure the request based on the quota uh, defined inside of that plan. And then we're going to test this and see this meter in action. So let's go back to our uh, Zooplo dashboard. We're going to go to our route.json. This is where we define our routes. And as you can see here, we have defined this post route in the previous video. This is the endpoint. And we were calling a function in response to any request that comes to this endpoint. The function is just going to talk to, AP, uh, to OpenAI, generate the text, store it into Superbase, and generate the image, and then send the response back. Again, we talked about the details of implementing this in the previous video, so watch that if you want to get into the details. But what we want to do here is add some policy. So we had the API key inbound uh, applied before. I'm going to remove this rate limit inbound because you can also apply any rate limiting even without having subscription plans. You can have an API endpoint. You can ask them to authenticate with an API key and limit their requests based on whatever you define in this policy here very easily. But for now, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to add a policy here. And for this policy, if you search for monetization, you can add this monetization API. This is going to use the services and the bucket we just created with different plans that corresponds to different products in Stripe um, to also meter their request. So as you can see here, down here in the meter, it's a bit small, I apologize, but it's using the same key that we used inside of our different plans, which was requests. And this is going to uh, then apply whatever meter that you have defined inside that plan against this specific user. So I'm going to hit OK here. I don't think I have to change anything. Let's save this up. So let's open up our developer portal again and close the previous one to just also get refreshed. Now inside of our documentation, it's the same post that I had. Now I'm going to test this again. Now this time if I'm running the test and this goes through, I should be able to go back inside of my subscription and see actual usage uh, tracked for this specific request that we sent and apply to my quota against the 10 requests limit that I had on the free account. Here we go, so we get the response back. We have the generated text, we have the image again. Now if I close this and go to subscription again and close this up, this time I should be able to see that I had one request because this time I have added the monetization policy that applies this specific API key to the correct plan that we have defined and meter the request based on the quota that they are allowed to or it has been defined inside of that bucket. Now something else here is that we can go to manage subscriptions. This is going to redirect us to a customer portal that's hosted from Stripe, which is basically going to allow me to change my subscription plan. So right now I'm on the free plan with $0 a month. I want to update the plan to maybe go to the basic plan, $10 a month for 100 requests. So continue. This is going to go through with the same payment account that I had. Once confirmed, this is going to redirect me back to the portal page where I can, I should be able to see the updated plan and the, the updated coda. And as you can see down here, my limit has been increased to now allow me for 100 requests per month. And this is how easily you can monetize your APIs using Zooplo. 
We have talked about API key authentication and rate limiting in previous videos. And in this video, we added the layer of monetization using Stripe and Zoopla together. So let's recap what we had done. We created some products inside of our Stripe account. These were different subscription plans or tiers and the number of requests or limits that we wanted to offer to our subscribers. We then created the same plans using the new metering service inside of our Zooplo to match those products. So every uh, tier had a specific number of requests allowed. We then created or added a, added a plugin to our Zooplo account to be able to listen to webhook events coming from Stripe. So anytime we have a new subscriber, Stripe is going to send a webhook back to Zooplo to say, hey, such and such customer just uh, subscribe to this plan. This is the plan that they created. We have the plan IDs or the product IDs or define them back inside of the Zooplo so we can assign them to the correct bucket or to the correct quota on plan that we have created in Zooplo. And once we had done that, we added the monetization policy on top of our routes where we added API key authentication or uh, API rate limiting in the past. We replaced that with our monetization policy that's going to now measure the requests for this specific customer based on that specific API key against their subscribed quota or against their plans limit. Now, one last thing before we wrap up is that Zooplo is not going to charge anything extra on top of the Stripe fees. So all the payment processing is done by Stripe. Zooplo is just going to allow you to transfer that subscription information into metered buckets and plans to sit in front of your gateway. You can get started with Zooplo for free. They do also have paid tiers depending on how many requests you want to serve. I'm currently using the free plan. You can look into the different tiers that they have depending on your need. And that's a wrap for this video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments like always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.